Skip, good to talk. Nice to have you with us again. How you doing? Okay? Doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you with us. Uh, let's start with Mancini. What a nice story that is. Uh, he's going to be a big inspiration. Hit 30-something homers a couple years ago. Uh, the colon cancer and everything else got a big ovation. I would think that fires up everybody seeing him out there. Let's go there first. Go ahead. Yeah, it's obviously a, uh, he's just an incredible person. He's, um, he is loved by everybody. And watching him go through what he did last year, uh, He's just so tough, and the ovation he got the uh, the other day when against against the Pirates. Uh, hats off to to our fans and and the Pirates and the umpires that were there that day that uh, to giving him the time to to give the ovation and and recognizing the, how special that moment was for Trey. I thought that was just a, it was an awesome awesome moment. Uh, you're gonna basically keep an eye on him all year, right? And not wear him out, Brendan. You got him as a first baseman DH. He's important to your lineup. But he's coming off, uh, you know, uh, stage three colon cancer, so you have to be careful. Tricky spot for you. Let me see how you're going to handle that. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's somebody. I'm just, I'm just going to talk to him every day. I'll, I'll we'll plan things out. Uh, it's uh, he, uh, you know, I'm going to just check in with him and see how he feels on a daily basis. And he's obviously a huge part of our team. He's a big part of our lineup. Um, but his health and and how he feels is the most important thing. And and uh, so we'll just we'll take it day to day. All right, momentum from last year. You had a good season. You were in the mix there for a little while. You didn't finish in last place. I know that sounds crazy, but that's a good step for this Oreo team rebuilding. You won 25 ball games out of the 60. You like to keep that momentum going here uh, in another phase of the rebuilding plan. That's sometimes tricky. Give me some thoughts on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I was pleased with how we played the first 40 games. I thought we were really competitive. I thought that we played. We were playing our division tough, our, our division's obviously really good and, and a lot of really good teams in it. And um, as well as the, the interleague against the national league East schedule that we, that we played. Uh, so I thought we played good the first two thirds of the year, uh, the last third of the year, we got some, we had some young guys come in and, and uh, had some nice last 30 games or so 20, 30 games um, with a couple of rookie starters. Mount castle came did a really nice job in left field. Uh, so I thought that there was, even though we, we kind of stumbled, um, the last couple of weeks, I thought that we had some guys get some great experience in the big leagues. And, uh, you know, we lost Santander those last 20 games, too, had a monster year up until that point. Uh, so I think we had, we had some nice young players and guys are continuing to improve. And that's what we're trying to do right now. All right. A couple of things here. Rebuilding the middle infield part. Shortstop goes to the Angels. Uh, the other one you didn't tender and you've been Galvis in uh, to help there. Uh, Got to rebuild short and second there. Brendan, tell me about that uh, in spring training. Go ahead. Yeah, well, we signed Freddie Galvis. Uh, he's you know, been a middle infielder and shortstop uh, for a lot of games in his, in his career. A guy that uh, has been a real steady uh player in the middle of the field on a lot of clubs. Uh, so we're excited about, about having Freddie. He's been a nice, been a nice addition so far. He's been a nice leader in our clubhouse. Uh, I see him talking to our players all the time. He's got great information. Uh, he's a quality person. So we're excited to add Freddie. Uh, we also have some uh, middle, other middle infield candidates at second base. Yomer Sanchez has come over from the White Sox, uh, as well as Pat Baleka was here last year. Ramon Urias was here. Got, got a little taste last year. So we have some, some flexibility there in the middle infield. All right, pitching. Uh, I, I had Hernandez on last week or so. I mean, you know, we got Means sitting there. Uh, you need to get a little lightning in the bottle with a couple of the veterans you brought in, Harvey included. Uh, I would think that's going to be a big task here these next three, four weeks of spring training to round out a staff. Give me some thoughts there. Yeah, we have a lot of guys. With, we have some open spots, and we have a lot of candidates. I was excited about how Dean Kramer and Keegan Aiken threw uh, the last, their last five or six starts. They, they made their debuts last year, pitched mostly in our division, and, and pitched well for the most part. Two guys that, that uh, Dean came over in the Machado trade, and Keegan was a high-round pick for us a few years ago. I uh, love their arms and excited about how they threw last year and if they're going to continue to improve. So a couple of young starters, got add John Means, and then we have a lot of candidates there for that fourth and fifth spot. Uh, you know, uh, Lopez came over from Kansas City. Uh, I thought he did a nice job last year. He won some games against some good clubs. So we have, we have some nice internal candidates um, as well as Ed and Felix and, and Matt to, to the mix. 
All right, keep an eye on that. That's uh, you know a, a scenario that we gotta make sure we get to round out that rotation. All right, how about the? Uh, is the team further? I mean, I know the catcher is gonna be a big time player, and I know obviously this kid Rodriguez got a chance to be a big pitcher. Is the organization, Brendan, are they a little further ahead with pitching prospects or a little further ahead with positional prospects? What can you tell me about that? Well, I think at the upper levels, we're a little bit ahead in pitching prospects. Um, you know, we, at, you, you know, you draft Adley Rushman a couple of years ago. Obviously, with going one-one college guy, he's going to be, he's going to be, uh, you know, he's here right now. He's going to be further along than most. Uh, but I think we have our up, some upper-level pitching uh, prospects that I, I think are going to make impacts on our club here in the next few years. Um, D.L. Hall, Grayson Rodriguez, Malcolm, Michael Baldwin is in camp. who had a nice year in Double A a couple of years ago. Uh, so I like our pitching that's coming. You do. All right. Now, uh, what is the – listen, you want to win ball games. you're a manager. I mean, you want to win the games, but you're also a manager with a lot of young players where you got to give them, you know, a little trial and error. Maybe you don't pinch it in the seventh, sixth inning with a lefty righty thing to see how the young player adapts in that situation game on the line. So, very tricky scenario for a manager in your shoes, Brendan, because you have to worry about player development. You know, wins is important, but it's not the end all – so that's uh, hard to, you know, sort of walk that tightrope. Give me some thoughts on that for a sec. Go ahead. Well, you definitely have big picture in mind, but you're trying to win every night. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a competitive uh, way of thinking. I mean, there, there's, we're playing against a really, really tough schedule. Um, I think we've been competitive for a couple of years, even though we, we were, you know, we lost a lot of games a couple of years ago. I thought our guys played hard all the way through. I thought our guys played hard for 60 games last year. I think our young players are getting better. Um, I think the league recognizes that, that we have some young players coming as well as some young players that are here right now that are continuing to improve. But yeah, the goal is to win every single night you step on the field. And that's something that we're just going to continue to focus on here going forward. All right. And last thing, the schedule, I, I just looked at it April, a cold weather, B NL American league East Red Sox and Yankees to spot off a road trip. And then some teams against the West and the Yankees come visit you Chilly in early April, as you know better than anybody. And, you know, last year you started in Boston. You did great. So that was fine. But right into the meat grinder right away in this division. Give me some thoughts on that for a sec. Go ahead. Yeah, the division's obviously tough. I think it's gotten – it's improved from last year. Uh, you know, Toronto is going to be really good. And, and uh, you know, obviously the, the, the Yankees and Boston's going to be good again. And Tampa's good every year. So I think that we have – we're cut out for us. We play the National League East and the Interleague. That, that, all those teams have improved as well. So we just got to continue to improve. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we're going to come to the ballpark every night. Uh, we're going to be prepared, and we're going we're to play to win every night and try to win as many series as we can. Good job there, Brendan. Don't disappear when we check in. Appreciate a few minutes here. Enjoy the month of spring training there in Sarasota. Thanks very much. Thanks, Chris.